welcome to Chef Paradise Live. I'm Chef Walid, and today we're going to be doing a tuna tartare with an unfiltered yuzu ponzu. All right, so here's what you're going to need for this recipe. You're going to need some toasted black sesame seeds, some sliced radishes, store them in water. They usually get a little bit crisper. Some cherinola olives. You can easily use black kalamata olives, pitted olives, whatever it may be. Uh, just make sure they're pitted. We're going to use some edible flowers. Here we have an assortment of violas and pansies. And then over here, the final garnish is going to be a compressed cucumber. It's compressed in sudachi. Uh, sudachi is a form of uh, Japanese citrus fruit. Uh, the citrus family of sudachi comes also with dai dai, which is kind of like the Japanese lime, yuzu, like a Japanese lemon, and then the final one, which is kabosu, which is a very green and peppery lime juice. We also have a Greek yogurt that we're going to be scenting with some lime zest. That's gonna add a nice little cream flavor to the dish and kind of cut through all the umami flavors. And then finally, we have uh, Big Eye Tuna uh, from our friends over at Pelican Grill. So the idea is with tuna is that you always wanna pay attention to where the grains are. You don't wanna cut with the grain, you wanna cut against the grain. So in cases like this, in which we have a grain that's running two ways, you're going to want to knock off where the grain stops. This we will reserve and cut later on. For now, we're left with this. I'm going to be cutting it right down the middle. And what you're left with should be this. If you pay attention, you see the grains going in a certain direction. Your final cut is going to be a dice, meaning that you're going to be going against the grain. So you're going to want to cut to start just like this. And again, the sizing of the tuna tartare is obviously subjective to the end user. Feel free to cut it any size that you want. For me, I like it to be about a quarter inch by quarter inch thick. And what that does is it gives you a nice little mouth feel. So you feel like you're actually eating tuna and it's not too minced. Same thing with this. You notice the grains are going like this, but your final cut is to be squares. So you want to cut with the grain in this case. In order to achieve the final cut, which is going to be just like this. Make sure you're using a really sharp knife for this as you do want nice and even strokes. So final cut is going to be this guy. So you see that the grain is going like this. We're going to want a final cut like that. So we're gonna cut with the grain, like we said. And then once more. Last but not least, the tip. All right, so once your tuna is all cut up, you wanna grab your yuzu ponzu. This is also available in the chef curated pantry at Chef's Paradise. You wanna take probably about two good glugs of this. That's one glug, and that's two glugs. So with yuzu ponzu, uh, ponzu is typically made up of the kombu, dashi, and uh, mirin, which is a rice wine vinegar, a little bit of soy, and then usually a citrus fruit of sorts. And like we briefly talked about before, there's four citrus fruits in the Japanese citrus family that you could use, uh, or you could buy the pre-prepared product ready to rock and roll. This is an unfiltered product, so it is a little bit more cloudy than the typical stuff that you find at the grocery store, and a far more superior product. So, and you want the tuna to shine a little bit, so it's not very heavy on the soy. So then you want to give this a quick stir, just to make sure that the tuna is all enveloped in the ponzu and the yuzu that's in this is going to start cooking the meat a little bit so don't be scared if a little bit of your tuna starts to go a little bit white that's the whole point okay so we're going to set that aside for now and we're going to move on to the greek yogurt that's been sent with a few limes so it's very simple we're not going to do anything to the yogurt the yogurt and the lime zest is going to be cutting through the umami of the dish there's a lot of umami happening in the ponzu and there's a lot of umami happening in the olives so this is going to be cutting through all of that. So in the process of zesting your limes, you want to make sure that a common practice is that you're going back and forth with the lime. Well, you're going to ruin the longevity of your zester. The idea is that you, the teeth are all facing in one direction. When you pull your lime back, if it's on the zester, it will bring down all the teeth, thus bringing down the life of your zester. So be sure to zest, lift, and return. Okay, so now we're going to just give a quick stir. Um, to the yogurt and the lime zest. And then you don't necessarily have to put it into a squeeze bottle. This is completely fine not to, but I'm gonna be putting it in a squeeze bottle just, and you'll see it in the final plating as to why. So 
So once your lime zest yogurt is all done and you have all your prep set aside and your tuna has been sitting for at least three to five minutes to kind of really bring in all those juices, we're gonna start plating. So for plating, there is no real rhyme or reason to as to why I chose this plate, uh, but I did choose red on white on blue just for some sheer color and the blue kind of represents the ocean and some sea foam. I'll also be using a ring mold. You don't necessarily have to use this. Uh, you could just spoon it onto the plate and figure it out. But I like, I prefer this. I think it's a little bit more chef-like to plate with one of these. So I'm gonna be using this and I'm gonna be offsetting it to the right side of the plate. So before you put the tuna back in the, into the mold, you want to give it a good final stir. Make sure all the flavors are fully coated. And you do wanna slightly drain out the side of the tuna just to make sure that you're not gonna get too much juice on the plate. You don't wanna push your spoon down too hard on the tuna because you're gonna break it up. So my recommendation is just get it into a nice happy position where you have two full portions worth and then use the back of the spoon to finalize the plating and the push down. So the idea is when the, while the tuna is still in the ring mold, you're going to wanna to put some of the more messier items in there. If you take the ring mold off, the black sesame might splatter all over the plate. So for me, and a little chef tip, is that I would put the black sesame in now while the ring mold is still on the tuna, just so that it doesn't go everywhere. So you want to take about a, a generous teaspoon and you want to kind of just coat the top of the tuna. This is going to add some great textural values, it's going to add some great sesame flavors. I'm going to start off with the next layer, which is going to be the yogurt. And I'm going to keep the mold on. I'm just going to do a couple of splodges inside of the, of the ring mold. This is going to create an anchor or a glue, per se, for the rest of the ingredients. So then you want to lift everything up nice and carefully. All right, so then we're going to be finishing off the plate with the final three garnishes. And then we have a final component to go on top, which is going to be the flowers. So we're going to start off with the radishes. You want to put six or seven of these. You could go four, you could go five. Again, you're the chef, you're the author, you do what you want. And then I'm going to start with the Cherniola olives. The reason I chose Cherniolas is due to the fact that they have a really good meatiness to them and they're really umami based. And umami of the olives will work really well with the ponzu. So again, with this, you only want to do about seven or eight. You can go crazy and do 10. And again, don't feel like the restraint of the plate is just solely on the plate itself. You could go, you could go a little bit out, you could go a little bit on the side. Next up, we have the Sudachi cucumbers. And again, don't feel compelled to stay on the actual ring mold. You could get a little exciting and go a little off the edge here. So then last but not least, we have the flowers. So these are edible flowers. Uh, you can find these at a lot of boutique grocery stores. You do want to choose primarily violas, pansies. If you can get your hands on begonias, begonias are absolutely delicious. They're really tart and really acid and go really well with tuna. So you just want to take off the petals on the sides and you kind of want to just plant a couple of pieces. You could alternate colors. So this, for example, is a pansy, so this would be, give me a little bit of pepper. This is viola, so this is going to give me a little bit of acid. And yes, all flowers do taste different. And then last but not least, we're going to add a little bit more yogurt to add a little bit more texture to the plate. So here we have the finished products of yellowfin tuna with yuzu unfiltered ponzu, some sudachi cucumbers, some olives and some black sesame, and some lime Greek yogurt. Thank you so much for joining us at Chef Paradise Live. It's been a pleasure.